from Midland, Odessa and Big Spring. This is ABC Big 2 News at 10. Now at 10, U.S. medical professionals are weighing in tonight whether to declare monkeypox a public health emergency. This comes one day after the World Health Organization sounded the alarm. Good evening and thank you for joining us on this Sunday night. I'm Rob Took. Now infections are rising. More than 16,000 cases are now confirmed in at least 75 countries. More than 2,900 of those monkeypox cases are here in the United States. ABC's Elwin Lopez leads us off tonight with those new numbers. Tonight, the Biden administration says the U.S. is considering whether to declare monkeypox a public health emergency. Right now, we have over 2,000 cases, but we have ramped up vaccinations, ramped up treatments, ramped up testing, and we're going to continue to look at all sort of policy options. Such a declaration would allow the Health and Human Services Secretary greater freedom to allocate emergency resources. The World Health Organization already sounding the highest level of alert over the outbreak, now impacting at least 70 five countries with more than 16,000 reported cases. The U.S. with 17% of those cases, 900 cases in New York State alone. I noticed that there are two lesions. The sores are very painful. The current outbreak primarily seen in men who identify as gay or bisexual, but anyone is at risk of exposure through close contact. The CDC warning that transmission can also occur through contaminated clothing and bedding. This is demands for vaccines in the U.S. soar, prompting officials to order 5 million more doses to add to the hundreds of thousands already going into the arms of anyone who wants one. Now that was Elwin Lopez reporting. The disease is rarely deadly. Usually a person can recover without treatment. Symptoms, however, could take one to two weeks to show up after infection. Those symptoms can include rashes and fever. And developing now at 10, two people are dead. At least seven people are hurt total tonight after a shooting at a California car show. Police say at least three of those people were confirmed to have been shot. Now, it's not clear how the other four people got hurt, but all of this happened near Los Angeles. Police say it's not an active shooter, but right now they are looking for a suspect. And several people at Daytona Beach were hurt after a car struck a toll booth, drove onto the sand, and crashed into the ocean, hurting a child in the water. Witnesses said a man was driving and that there was a woman and two kids in the car. Police say the driver may have had a medical episode. He was going roughly 40 to 45 miles per hour at the time of the crash. Also developing tonight, the investigation into a triple murder at an Iowa state park involving a family while they were camping. Police say three members of the family were killed and their bodies were found inside their tent. That includes a six-year-old girl and her parents. Now, a nine-year-old boy survived the shooting. Police say the suspected gunman was found dead in a wooded area of the park with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police said the shooter had no connection to the family and they believe the act was completely random. And across Texas tonight, anger turned into action this weekend in Uvalde. A plate sale was held to support families who haven't had access to the money raised after the school massacre. This comes just after a special meeting to discuss and potentially fire Uvalde Schools Police Chief Pete Arredondo. That meeting was canceled Friday. Now, organizers say if they weren't raising money, they would be out protesting. Here's ABC's Lee Waldman with this report. It's so much harder knowing that they're still doing their jobs even though they failed us. Strong words by Uvalde victims' families turning into action as they join the community to host a barbecue chicken plate sale fundraiser. We just wanted to contribute how we could. Millions of dollars raised for the Uvalde Together We Rise fund, but according to the committee tasked with distributing these funds, it won't happen until November 21st. Adam Martinez, the plate sale organizer, knew he had to step up and do something. These are for the families that either lost loved ones or they were injured. Ultimately, more than $2,700 were raised today to be given out immediately. Jasmine Casares, Jackie's older sister turned advocate, was helping to make the plates. The high school senior says the delayed accountability in light of the shooting has been upsetting. I think everybody is frustrated, but you can't control what they do. It's, it's frustrating, but it's going to happen eventually, and there's no way they can escape that. Casares was
wasn't surprised Uvalde CISD canceled the planned emergency board meeting. She says terminations shouldn't stop with Ardondo. Starting from the top, like everybody that should have kept them safe. Michelle Prouty lives next to Rob. She was greeted by the sound of children playing at school every day. That is until May 24th. Prouty is confident Ardondo's termination will come no matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter how long they, de they delay. He's, he's going to lose his position because there's no way he can show his face back at that school. And that was Lee Waldman reporting there is a school board meeting tomorrow. Although the firing of Pete Arredondo is not on the agenda, the victim's families say they still plan on attending to voice their anger over inaction. Well, this guy didn't like being touched. A homeowner in Florida called for help after seeing an alligator under his Jeep. That alligator was about 11 feet long. Deputies and wildlife officials wrangled with the gator, who roared and fought fiercely against them. It was safely moved and taken to an alligator farm. And a whale struck a fishing boat off the coast of Plymouth, Massachusetts today. It was in an area where whales have been spotted several times in the past week. A viewer captured photos of the whale as it breached with several fishing boats nearby. The whale landed on one of those boats, causing the bow to dip down into the water. And I should add, no one was hurt, thankfully. And much closer to home, it was another warm day in the basin. The summer heat won't be giving up anytime soon. We're taking a live look outside at I-20 on this Sunday night. Light traffic at this hour tonight is cooling down. Joining us now for a check in our forecast is ABC Big 2's Bridget Sarpong with a look at the upcoming work week. Hi, Bridget. Hi, Rob, and the new work week is around the corner, and we're kicking it off with some temperatures sitting near normal. Today, we came in at a high of 94 degrees. Usually around this time in July, we're definitely used to 96 degree temperatures. Now, a warm day in the basin, but not as warm as how we're back in 1995 when we sat in our triple digits sitting at 106 degrees. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take advantage of the 94 degree temperatures. Hopefully, that'll come on into that new week, and I'll take a look at that later on the show. Back over to you. Rob. Thank you, Bridget. Now, brutal hot weather is hitting the Midwest, and crop farmers and cattle ranchers are getting hit hard in parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, Iowa, and Texas. The growing season for many crops is affected as the heat takes a lot of the moisture out of the soil. Long running drought conditions are harming the livestock and parching pastures, too. It's leading ranchers to spend more on supplemental feed for cattle. And in several major cities, the heat is turning life-threatening. ABC's Phil Lipoff has this report. Tonight, the life-threatening heat wave still suffocating the Northeast. Too hot. Too hot. <laughs> Extremely too hot. 89 degrees at 9 o'clock tonight. So if you have dinner plans, uh, make sure they're inside. In Newark, New Jersey, five straight days of hitting 100 degrees, the longest stretch on record. Record highs today from Providence to Boston, where the temperature there reached 100. In Philadelphia, misting stations were set up outside the Phillies ballpark to help cool the masses. And New York City facing its longest heat wave in nearly a decade. Cutting the distance of its annual triathlon in half today. And so since they've shrunk it down, it's like a bit disappointing, but uh, it's nice to know that they're taking care of our health first. More than 500 cooling centers open in New York City to help residents without air conditioning. 90 million Americans in all, from Texas to Maine, continuing to battle that dangerous heat. Heat so oppressive, now deadly. At least five deaths reported so far. Men, women, young and old. And that was Phil Lipoff reporting. Heat stroke can come on pretty quickly in this type of hot weather. Watch out for dizziness, headaches, and confusion. First, find a cooler spot if possible. Then use a cold cloth or a cold bath to bring down your temperature. If none of that works, call 911. And the weekend is over, but the heat and the wind is here to stay. Temperatures are slowly cooling down for tonight, but the winds are still front and center. How fast will wind travel tomorrow? I'll have that answer after the break.
And the Midland Rockhounds tried to end their weekend with a series win. Highlights from the Diamond coming up in sports. <laughs> And it's a mud bog for a good cause. Texans get down and dirty to raise money for breast cancer survivors. That story when we come back. USAA, we've been called too exclusive, because we only serve those who honorably serve. All ranks, all branches, and their eligible family members. Yep, that is exclusive, and we're fine with that. Suddenlink is becoming Optimum, and bit by bit, we're making big changes to reconnect with you. Like building Optimum Fiber, a new 100% fiber internet network, and combining it with Optimum Mobile for complete connectivity. We're giving you more flexibility with no first bundles or annual contracts. And we're here for you with 24-7 support, with your satisfaction backed by a 60-day money-back guarantee. Little by little, progress adds up to something bigger. Reconnecting with you. Let's reconnect. A new Chevy is the smart way to hit the open road this summer. The smart way to road trip and seek new adventures. Go a little farther this summer in a new Chevy. Find new get up and go, find new roads. Well qualified buyers get 2.49% financing on most 2021 and 2022 Chevy SUVs when you finance with GM Financial. New models are arriving daily. Secure yours today. See your Permian Basin Chevy dealers. Psst. Hey, parents, did you hear that this little one napping right here can get the COVID vaccine? Yep, the vaccine is now available for every kid six months old and up. And of course, it's safe and effective. So talk to a medical provider today to schedule an appointment. Visit vaccinenm.org slash kids if you'd like to learn more. Tuesday night. A News Nation exclusive. Chris Cuomo sits down one on one with News Nation's Dan Abrams. His first television interview since leaving CNN. What he's doing now? That is the nature of this war. What he's doing next? And answering the tough questions about his past. Chris Cuomo, the exclusive interview for the full hour on Dan Abrams Live, Tuesday night at 9, 8 central, only on News Nation. Get ready for your day with meteorologist Ryan DePhillips. And now, your local weather authority forecast. Happy Sunday, friends. Now, a new week is here, and I'm excited. But before we get into a new week, we're slowly making our way, closing out our Sunday, and taking a look at our Midland Sky Tower cam. You know, a little bit of some cloud cover, but not bad. We're warming up. You know, some light traffic going on. People are moving around this time of the night. Very clear driving conditions. Thanks to Roost by Nicholas. We're able to see the fun that is going on right now, this calm evening on Sunday. Now, before before that, you can't really feel what's going on. So currently in this moment, we are sitting at 88 degrees. Our humidity is sitting at 30%. So it does feel a little bit warmer than normal. And then our dew point sitting at 53. Our pressure 29.82. And then our winds are traveling south, southeast at 14 miles per hour. Now before that sunset happened at 8.51 p.m., we we're able to enjoy some near normal temperatures. So today we came in all the way up to 94 degrees. Usually around this time in July, we're definitely used to 90 six degree temperatures. Now a hot day in the area, but not as hot as how we were back in 1995 when we sat in our triple digits sitting at 106 degrees. Taking a look at our lows, we did come in pretty warm for that, sitting at 76 degrees for our lows. Around this time, we're definitely used to 73 degree temperatures, so three degrees warmer for our lows. Now currently this moment, this same 24 hours, the same time 24 hours ago, we are actually one degree warmer in the middle of Odessa area. In Big Spring, in Center, we're actually the same. In Seminole, we're cooling down by a degree. In Carl, it was about actually 10 degrees cooler this same time 24 hours ago. So really, temperatures are making it some movements for the new uh, Monday. And now tomorrow, we are going to start the day off in our 70s, very mild kind of morning. South winds will be traveling south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now, taking a look at our temperatures around 6 a.m., the entire 
area of Texas will be in their 70s, 76 in the middle of area. And then we, other than that, we do have the Fort Worth area sitting at 83 degrees. But for the most part, you know, we're going to start it off pretty cool. And then by the time we get into Monday around 11 a.m., that's when our map begins to turn a little bit red, which means we are warming up. Now, around 8 a.m., we're sitting at 76, a very windy kind of morning. Then by noon, we will be sitting at 89 warming quickly and then 5 5 p.m. we will be sitting at 97 degrees for a very hot day now a couple heat tips for you guys drink plenty of water apply your sunscreen regularly and take breaks in the shade it's going to be a hot kind of day so do be sure to take the necessary precautions that was a very windy day everyone sitting in their double digits but for the most part we are going to continue to see some of that wind so ladies be sure to hold on to those lashes guys be sure to hold on to your hats and your caps because you are going to need it and on top of that you know um, definitely not too bad. Just the wind is going a little bit of, you know, the south, but not at bad at all. Taking a look at the allergy report, our trees, our grass, and our dust sitting at a very low level, which makes it perfect for us to enjoy this new week that we have coming up. 97 degrees for Monday. Very windy and breezy on Tuesday. Now, Rob, I know that you can play a little bit with the heat, but you know, we're going to have a little bit of that air, so, you know, it's going to feel like we're getting some AC going on. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to that in some uh, fresh air flowing through. But now I'm going to complain about something else. It's the allergies. The only time I can breathe is whenever I take a shower. Every other time I can't smell, I can't breathe anything. That allergy's got to go away too, Bridget. Oh, mine too. All right, well, thanks a lot. And across Texas, a number of people got down and dirty for a mud bog in Amarillo. The 14th annual event helps women diagnosed with breast cancer by raising money for medical bills and financial support. Here's a look. Today, we've got our annual mud bog, all women's mud bog. They get two runs, $30 for two runs donated, and then they get to play while their men cheer them on instead of the opposite way it usually goes. And we've got little girls, we've got older women, and they just love it. They love it. We've got good food. We've got lots of events going on here today past the mud bog. We've got auction items. To be here and to see the crowds and to see our recipient here having a good time and the people coming in that have always supported us. The off-road world is an amazing world. This is a blessing to me and for all my family. For sure, and I am very grateful. Once you realize the need that's out there, men, you know, men and women both get diagnosed. And a lot of times money's a huge deal. We try to ease that for them the best that we can. And I know it's important to them to, to have this support, whether we're able to give them lots of money or little money, they know we're here to support them. As a family, the MFT family supports them all every year. <laughs> And now, your ABC Big Two Sports. Well, Houston Texans rookie wide receiver John Mechie III, he announced today he's been diagnosed with a form of leukemia. In his statement posted on social media, Mechie said he will likely not play at all this season. Now, Mechie's statement mentions that he was diagnosed with the most curable form of leukemia. It reads in part, quote, I'm currently receiving great medical care, am in good spirits, and I expect to make a recovery at a later point in time. Houston placed Mechie on the active non-football illness list after the announcement. The Texans traded up in the second round to pick the former Alabama star 44th overall in the 2022 draft. We're all rooting for you, John, and best of luck in your recovery. On the Extreme Football League, known as the XFL, announced their 2023 local markets with five holdover cities and three new ones. San Antonio, Las Vegas, Orlando, they all join Arlington, Houston, St. Louis, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. All that gives Texas three XFL teams. Texas is so important to the XFL that the league has held conversations about centralizing weekday practices for all teams in the Dallas area. Players and coaches would then go to their local markets for games. The XFL's first game is scheduled for February 18th, 2023. All right, Astros and Mariners, AL West battle, first inning, no score. Jose Altuve, I had to make sure this was the right game because I feel like he did it again. He led off the game with a solo homer, his 19th of the year. Astros up 1-0. Jeremy Pena 
makes it back to back, homering off Robbie Ray, his 14th of the year. And just like that, two batters in, the Astros lead 2-0. Top of the second, same score. Mauricio Dubon hammers one down the third baseline off Ray. That's going to skip out for a ground rule double. Aldemis Diaz scores. Astros up 3-0. 5-0 now in the bottom of the third. Jesse Winker, a scary moment here. He chops one on up of the line off of Framber Valdez. He collides with Jeremy Pena on the base paths. Winker would remain the game, but he would leave later with a right ankle injury. Eighth inning, same score. Martin Maldonado with a nice double finding the gap. Alex Bregman and Diaz would come in to score, and the Astros take this one 8-5. Exactly. All right, Rangers Athletics, more AL West matchup. Rangers up 1-0 in the first. Adolis Garcia makes it 3-0, a two-run shot, his 17th of the season. Garcia, have yourself a day, 4-4, four for four. three runs batted in. It's a 3-0 game. Fifth inning, Rangers up 4-0. Corey Seager, he goes deep, way over center field. It's gone, his 23rd of the season. Ramon Laureano got his glove on it, but unable to bring it in. And Texas leads 5-0. A few batters later, base is loaded. Cole Calhoun takes this one right up the middle for a two-run single. Rangers score six in the inning. They lead 10-0. But in the ninth, the A's are fighting back. Sean Murphy goes deep for a solo homer. That's gone. Then Chad Pinder. He'll have a turn. Pulling a ball deep to left and gone again. Then... You think it doesn't stop. Well, it doesn't. Tony Kemp, gone. Another solo homer. A's three straight home runs, but it wouldn't be enough. Rangers, they held on to win 11-8. to eight. All right, The Midland Rockhounds hosting the Amarillo Sod Poodles in the rubber match of their series. Just like yesterday, they didn't have a hit through two innings, but the gloves were all gold today. Another error-free game from the Hounds as Logan Davidson makes that play look so easy. Later, Amarillo with base runners on. The Hounds would roll two to perfection. Midland gets the double play as they try to give themselves a chance down early. But J.J. Schwartz, he would get the Hounds on one of their first hits in the fourth inning, he would end up getting out at second a little bit later in the inning. Jeremy Ironman, he would reach on a fielder's choice. He would snag second on a great steal, but a, a three-run eighth, that helped Midland avoid a shutout, but they drop the three-game series. All right, Cooperstown, New York, welcomed seven new members to the National Baseball Hall of Fame. The class of 2022 is headlined by former Red Sox slugger David Big Poppy Ortiz, who made the Hall of Fame in his first year on the ballot after a 20-year career. Ortiz became the fourth Dominican-born player to make it to Cooperstown. The other six inductees include players from decades ago. Buck O'Neill, Bud Fowler, Gil Hodges, Jim Cott, Minnie Mignoso and Tony Oliva. Interesting note here, Rob, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, they did not get the votes to make it in on their 10th and final time on the ballot. That's something definitely to keep in mind, but congrats to everyone who made it in this year. Yeah, absolutely, Avi. Congrats to all those new Hall of Famers. It's also uh, Barry Bonds' 58th birthday. That's the only fun fact I have. Yeah, happy birthday to, to Mr. Bonds and Clemens. Obviously, the steroid era, definitely something to, to keep in mind as voters uh, vote for the Hall of Fame. But uh, we'll see. Maybe later on in history, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. I hear you. All right, thank you so much, Avi. And coming up, tips on how to save money with back-to-school shopping. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Celebrity Family Feud, everybody. Let's get it on. Celebrity Family Feud is all new. This is my dream come true. Where Hollywood's best get put to the test. Got a good one for you tonight. Celebrity Family Feud, all new tonight on ABC. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick parks itself. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kinda got a six sense. And a head-up display. They're here. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yep. So you. It is. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Pay no interest on Buick SUV models. Visit your Permian Basin Buick dealer. This isn't just any burger. This is a Whataburger Bacon Blue Cheese Burger. It's bigger, bolder, and baconier. Made to order with blue cheese crumbles on two fresh all-beef patties, grilled onions, crispy bacon, and our own peppercorn ranch. 
This burger is for someone who demands the best, but is super nice about it. Thank you. You're welcome. Whataburger's all new bacon blue cheese burger. Just like you like it. People say we're too set in our ways. This is Jesse. We've had it forever. We just prefer things the way they are. I'm giving him the usual. Oh, sweetie, you got a fax. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Change is overrated. Indeed. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it is broke... We make do. I guess that's why we spend too much on energy every month. Don't be a holdover. Switch to Champion Energy where there's no surprise charges, no hidden fees, and you always get a fair price. Champion Energy. AMID is the Basin's first television station. From 1953 until now and beyond. We're always first, always accurate, and always proud to call the Basin home. Watch ABC Big 2 News. Watch Good Morning Basin from 5 to 7 on ABC Big 2. Even though we're sweltering with summer, back to school isn't far behind. Parents who are looking for savings, especially with inflation going on, eating into paychecks, well, here are some tips that you can save with uh, if you're looking for uh, back to school shopping. Here's ABC's Deidre Bolton with more. Colored pencils, backpacks, and tablets. These are just some of the items on many back to school shopping lists. There's very long lists for classrooms and clothes shopping so it's a lot with inflation near a 41 year high prices for many of these items are rising our latest survey shows that families plan to spend over 860 dollars on average which would be slightly higher than last year among the back to school shopping items electronics clothing and shoes only spending on electronics is forecast to stay more or less the same level as it was last year. Back to school shoppers are forecast to spend more on clothing and shoes. Exactly what mom, Kate Snyder, is seeing personally. A lot of our um, inflation things that I've been able to see have been things like um, backpacks and clothes and shoes. In addition to bargain hunting early, as in now, Snyder found a creative in-house solution. I have two daughters and they're pretty close in age, so it's really nice because we can uh, swap things. So like their backpacks that they used last year, we'll just swap them this year. In addition to pro tips such as starting to shop early and considering store brands instead of name brands, one expert says there's power in community. Even banding together with other families to buy items in bulk and then split those across a group in order to save a little bit of extra cash. Another tip from one of the leading school uniform companies in the U.S. If you're shopping for, for a full year's worth of clothing, that's going to be a pretty significant expense. Um, so we always recommend that families spread that purchase throughout the year. And that was Deirdre Bolton reporting. You can save on back-to-school shopping during this year's upcoming annual sales tax holiday. That's on Friday, August 5th through the 7th. The Comptroller encourages all taxpayers to support Texas businesses while saving money on tax-free purchases of most clothing, footwear, school supplies, and backpacks during that tax-free weekend. And coming up, a Texas man just broke a world record for having an unusual and awesome collection. Check it out in just moments. Watch ABC Big 2 News weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. If you wake up in pain, I promise after surgery I know all about back pain. The new anniversary heirloom mattress is made to lift your body and all your pain points, and it's found exclusively in Bob Mills Sleep Spa. Now, let's get you out of pain. and 10-speed transmission. Premium features available on GMC Sierra Heavy Duty. Step up to GMC with 0% financing on Sierra Heavy Duty models. Visit your Permian Basin GMC dealer. Earn an associate degree in respiratory therapy from Midland College. This is a 20-month curriculum, 66 semester credit hours. This program prepares students for an allied health specialty that cares for patients with cardiopulmonary deficiencies. At Priority ER Care, we have the newest CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and labs facility in the Permian Basin. 
with the capability of handling both simple and complex medical crises. Priority ER Care. We've seen it all. We do it fast. Got my hair, got my head. Introducing new One A Day Multi Plus, a complete multivitamin, plus an extra boost of support for your immunity, brain, and hair, skin, and nails. New One A Day Multi Plus. Fueling our cars, our homes, and our local economy, gas, oil, and electricity are all powering the Permian. I'm Matt Fonz. Watch my reports every Wednesday night at 6 and 10. Watch Powering the Permian every Wednesday night on ABC Big 2 News. If you wake up in pain, I promise after surgery I know all about back pain. The new anniversary heirloom mattress is made to lift your body and all your pain points, and it's found exclusively in Bob Mills Sleep Spa. Now, let's get you out of pain. A Texan's love of Sonic the Hedgehog just put him in the record books. Barry Evans of Dayton has collected Sonic the Hedgehog memorabilia for the last 30 years. Now Evans' collection has been certified by the Guinness World Record at 3,050 items. He made his first Sonic purchase, a Sega Genesis Hedgehog 2 game in 1992. His unique collection includes figurines, soft toys, and even arcade machines. The most expensive item in his Sonic collection is a Sonic and Tails walkie-talkies at $1,700. Coming up after the break, Bridget will have one last look at the forecast. Stay with us. to get ready for the Permian Basin Fair and Expo this September 2nd through the 11th. And for those who wish to participate in this year's Miss Permian Basin Fair pageant, the deadline's winter is Wednesday, August 10th at 5 p.m. For more info and registration, visit pbfair.com. Locals know the best way to control expensive water costs is to install their own water well. Since 1981, the JR's Water Well team has been serving the Permian Basin, providing quality residential and commercial water wells that every customer can trust. Our customers describe us as outstanding professional with a quick response time and expert knowledge. Trust the JR sticker seen all over West Texas for your water well installs, maintenance, and repairs. Call today to receive the Big 2 10% off anything offer. A new Chevy is the smart way to hit the open road this summer. The smart way to road trip and seek new adventures. Go a little farther this summer in a new Chevy. Find new get-up-and-go, find new roads. Well-qualified buyers get 2.49% financing on most 2021 and 2022 Chevy SUVs when you finance with GM Financial. New models are arriving daily. Secure yours today. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Being the new face of Don't Mess With Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. Thanks. Everybody loves me here. I can't wait to go home. I just want to help keep Texas clean and maybe spice some things up around here. I'll never litter, Joe. Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. The Permian Basin Fair and Expo is this September 2nd through the 11th. So make sure you register now for Junior Miss and Little Miss pageant this year. The deadline to enter is Wednesday, August 10th at 5 p.m. For more info and registration, visit pbfair.com. And let's take one let's look at that seven day forecast and i'm excited to know rob is probably smiling right now looking at the seven day forecast because no triple digits whatsoever however rob i'm sorry to break it to you it is going to be hot but tomorrow and for tuesday we are going to have some wind um so you know a nice little breeze which is going to be great and then we actually get a car wash for some of us who don't or haven't been to the car wash in a while for friday and saturday 30 percent chances of thunderstorms so definitely not too bad whatsoever rob and avi i'm excited some wind some rain and even some sunshine so everyone can be happy. I'm very excited for all that heat, Bridget, like you said. <laughs> can't tell, he's joking. It's like we dealer's choice. <laughs> yeah, it's like dealer's choice is like what, what's going to be like in the thunderstorms too, I guess. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> some variety is always welcome. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> as for the rest of the week, I'll just be asleep or something. Just be in the shade, yeah. No, I feel you, dude. Good plan. That's all the time we have for news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Good Morning Basin starts at 5 o'clock in the morning. We'll see you then. Good night.